<clears throat> Just another stream test. Let's see if my bandwidth's okay. Um, looks like it's getting some FPS. Alright, we'll do one game. Um, from the looks of it, it would appear that... <clears throat> my bandwidth changes throughout the day. Early in the morning, late at night, it's good. But then, at prime time, for some reason, it just... I've got no upload speed. So I'll need to ask about service consistency. You know, understandably, you know, most cities are like that, where after work and before bed, everybody is using their computers <clears throat> and televisions and things like that. So it could affect upload speeds. So that just means at prime time, unfortunately, when everybody should be watching my stream, they can't because I can't stream. So I'll have to stream off hours or something. Or I'll just have to yell at the company until they do something. Uh-oh. That's right, we're still low, low diamond. <coughs> or very high plat. One or the other. Got him. Go in. Notice Rumble's the hardest to carry, <clears throat> because you could very easily outplay the entire enemy team, but they're all going to have items. They're going to have freezes, they're going to have uh, plungers, they're going to have warps, they're going to have boot, punch gloves, etc. So even though you can beat them, um, there could be zero defenders and you still are unable to obtain a goal. So Rumble's the hardest to carry, hence why it's also RNG champ. Uh, he should get that. Ah, good morning. Good morning. <coughs> uh, I don't know if I can get that. Okay, I did. Yeah, that tornado's in the way. on this stream test, I know my bitrate for audio is good at 160. Um, people recommend 44, so I can save a little bit of bitrate there. Uh, I couldn't get that. I'll just go back. Fake glove or gauntlet. Not be in trouble. <clears throat> I'm going to need to intercept this. Okay, good. We got it. Close. Yeah, I couldn't go back for boost there. Um, he had a direct line of goal. Oh yeah, the other thing is in the morning I have to queue Europe servers. I'm not right now, but maybe later I will if I want to get faster a few times. Maybe I can get around him. There's no, not enough boost. Or items. Lol.
Oh. Okay, they still can't aerial, it seems. I am not carrying this game. Everybody's got bagger loss. What's going on? Okay, we're back. See, my audio bit rate's good. Um, I might tone that down a little bit, just to save a little bit. And then it's my uh, video bit, bit rate. It really needs some work. Okay, I got this. Just a little tap into the corner, give us some time to rebound. <coughs> Close. This is lucky. Normally back and forth, or we're losing at the start. I thought he had that, wow. get the rebound, but I'm afraid people might actually have some luck with that. Try for a block instead. I'll just save the boot. Yeah, they're not at the level where they can effectively use spikes from the ceiling. Oh, it's not ceiling boost. Okay, teammates got them. There's no way. <coughs> I still can't do any wall stuff. I can try. Well, they're on the li they're on the scoreboard. <coughs> so at least it's not a shutout. And of course, I've only participated in four of these nine goals, so everybody just getting really good luck, and our team is more skilled. Oh, they had a silver. Alright. Am I still getting terrible FPS? No, it looks consistent. Alright, then I'll do a couple more games. I'll just play a bunch.
So I think my twos is finally starting to settle. Like I'm not gaining and losing multiple divisions. And in fact, I'm not gaining or losing one division each round. Now sometimes I win or lose and I'm We're stationary. Going to one place and we'll be back. Alrighty, have fun. One, just one place. <clears throat> Alright, so there is a difference between Switch players and everybody else, even though the game has been out since 2015. For the Switch, it came out in 2017, and we are now living in 2019. So game's been out for four years total, two years on the Switch. So why does Switch still have such a bad rap? Um, mostly because of mechanics. Players haven't played as much. Um, there is some of the stigma where Nintendo caters toward younger audiences, so the players are um, not as competitive. <coughs> so when they say, hey, I'm a Switch player and I'm... Diamond, like, that's rare for Switch. And the other thing is, of course, Switch doesn't have the ability to do custom maps. So for, like, the Xbox, um, it's just been out so long that players have started to get kind of used to it. Um, but for the Switch... I should just rotate properly, like a threes game. But for the Switch, uh, there's really no training workshops. And so since the game hasn't been out as long, players haven't played as much on the Switch. Uh, I think one more reason is because the Switch, at best, can only get like 20 to 30 FPS. So you don't have the fine green control that the other platforms have. So sometimes you're fighting against uh, frame lag, and you can't make your inputs very precise. <clears throat> so the biggest thing for me is, um, now that I'm on the PC, I can do some of the Steam workshops, and that's been amazing. Um, I did about an hour of workshops just yesterday, and my mechanical skill has was noticeable. I was doing things that I should not be able to do after just an hour. And I've got 870 hours plus in this game. Uh, on Steam, I've got close to 40, so let's just say 900 hours in this game. So after 900 hours, I did one hour, and I noticed a difference. It's just the workshops are that good. <clears throat> so I'm going to definitely need to do more of those workshops. Of course, off-stream. Yeah, just uh, dribble training, the noob version, where I don't have to keep it on the top of my car, but just getting some fine green car control by actually manipulating an object around a path. Because <clears throat> the advanced dribble training I still have difficulty with. And then I do uh, zero gravity. I just practice some of my rotations in the air, like pretending I'm at the angle where I'm off a wall, and then I need to make this kind of shot, so... Made him waste items. <clears throat> so yeah, when I say that I'm champ one on Switch, nobody believes me. Then they have to check and they're like, oh wait, Switch doesn't have um, the ability to do MMR in-game. Like there aren't any websites for that. 
the Switch players aren't on the leaderboards. That's just a fact. So yeah, now we're on Steam. So technically, since I'm on Steam on a platform that there's a lot of other players, so now I'm behind the curve. When I say I'm champ, people are like, oh, you're only champ? Like, how long have you had this game? I'm like, well, actually, I moved from Switch. They're like, you're champ on Switch? No way. So, you know, stigma. <clears throat> Alright, another lucky game. Still up by three. Now, of course, very possible to lose. Because this is Rumble. Ten second goals are still a thing. Players are used to having items here, and so when they don't have items, suddenly their mechanics are much different. So you can get zero or a ten second goals on them, and they can't retaliate. Because they don't know where they should be, they should they don't have positioning awareness. Stuff like that. trying to give it to him. <laughs> One opponent gave up. And that's something else I notice. I can't tell if it's uh, my controller or if it's Steam, but sometimes I can press my buttons and they don't work. So I have to actually, there's like a sensitivity inside the buttons. Oh wait, that's going in. Crap. <clears throat> So that's why sometimes I don't double jump, why sometimes um, my boost isn't going off. Um, I'm just used to pressing buttons very lightly. Alright, still up by three. And that's one thing that you won't see players doing is reading like that. Ooh, thanks for the boost. Ooh, good save. I'm just kind of derping around at this point, not taking it seriously. <clears throat> Some games like this are boring. I couldn't demo him. Oh, it's going down. Players can't triple. Now, of course, Rumble might not be your thing. But I'm just playing all modes, as you can see. I went up, and I'm in Div 2, so I went up two divisions in one game. I just need to stabilize my rank in all modes, which is... It gets it takes about 40 games to get your initial kind of placement, and then it takes another 40 games to solidify and get your rating stable. So, 40 times 8, because there's 8 different modes, is 320 games. I've got about 180, 190, so I'm about halfway there. But I've had so many doubles games, I know that one's already locked in. I'm trying to get the other modes in. Snow Day seems to be always the uh, most rare. So whenever I get a Snow Day, I'm happy. At the same time, Snow Day is also one of the most boring for people, um, because it's so much ground play. So if you're not familiar, um, with ground play, it actually is pretty good to teach you um, how to keep grounded and still make plays, but of course, that's not 
the rest of the game, so it's only a particular game mode. You have to always worry about aerials in other modes, and you have to develop aerial skill. Things like that. So if you focus strictly on your ground play, um, once you get higher end in Snow Day and players start making better hits, um, you'll start noticing, like right there, you'd want to go for an aerial on that kind of shot. They get some power hits, go up the ceiling, and then fly in. Oh, that's in. Good. And that's when, even if you have a little bit of aerial control, even diamond players in a snow day won't have very good aerial control. They'll be like gold, possibly even uh, plat in other modes, but they'll be diamond in snow day just because they've got good rotation and good ground play. Like there, it went off the ceiling. Not the ceiling, it went off the wall. Oh, it's going in, but nobody's there. <clears throat> so that one went off the wall, and because it was technically an aerial at that point, uh, nobody knew how to play it. And then that one, of course, it went off the ceiling. So nobody can aerial. So you're just playing a very ground-oriented game. And typically... Um, that means that players will be getting their hands on the ball more frequently instead of whiffing. Um, when they whiff, that means they're out of position, and then players can make more attempts on goal or passes and things like that. Um, whereas if it's grounded, then players are probably going to hit it. I'll go back for this one. Okay. Players are probably going to hit it, so they won't be uh, whiffing as much in Snow Day. And the last thing is um, shot placement. You can't shoot high, and then players are out of position and can't aerial. Because it's um, pretty much impossible to get a grounded puck up in the air without going to a wall or doing some sort of pinch. Uh, whereas in a regular game, you can place it high, and then players can't defend because it's too high and they mess up the aerials and stuff. So, Snow Day, there's many fewer goals in general being made. Some games, it's like a few minutes of overtime, and it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. You can see my double jump just... Gotta start pressing it harder. Okay, got that off, but... And teammates stole both boosts. What else can I say about Snow Day? Hmm. No, I haven't discussed much on my stream. I should probably do that in a YouTube series instead of just randomly on stream. Is... Um getting some of the foundations laid out for a full course on game theory. Not just game theory, but different aspects of uh, competition. So my YouTube stream is, uh, series is called Becoming a Balanced Player. You can treat anything like a game, so a player can still be a player that works the stock market, a uh, player that owns a business, Etc. So it's going to be how to win at games, business, and life. It's going to be my subtitle. Uh, 
Didn't get the block. I got the bump. Ah. Don't know what happened there. Car seemed to... Maybe I hit the little lip of the corner. Oh yeah, I did hit the lip of the corner. Darn it. Yeah, my tire seemed to go off and then I did a weird turn. Easily preventable. That's uh, why it's hard to carry. My teammate just like, oh, I'm gonna give him a goal. That was way too easily preventable. That's sad. Almost got it past all three. See, aerial game, nobody knows it, so that was normally a goal for orange. I can't even follow up. But I was able to get some good backboard defense going because of aerials and save the day. Except by save, I mean I didn't really turn it around at all. And of course, dribbling with a puck, forget about it. So combining Snow Day, having very long queue times, because very few people play it. Look at that, it went down three divs. Long queue times um, with a different type of player base and your rating can be quite different in snow day compared to other ones. So I've been doing some noob dribble, of course obstacle course, but then parkour map. This is this is one thing I really like here. Um, normally you were fighting gravity, so if you want to try practicing some of the flips that you do in the air, um, it's very difficult to figure out. Well, what I've noticed, I think it's either 15 or 18. Okay, it must be 18. But, um, with this, you're in a zero-g environment. Just slowly tilt and knock your car up. There we go. Oh, too hard. So just tilt, knock your car up. There you go and you can practice some of your flips. So how you rotate in different directions and whatnot, so you can pretend you're on walls. You can get to a wall position from the ground, from other positions. And I just like doing that for flip practice. There's no gravity, there's no boost. I've noticed some techniques, um, like a three-fourths cuxier twist or something like that. Um, it's not possible with my layout because I don't have regular air roll. So, I have to learn how to do a three-quarters cuxier twist without air roll. Um, I only have air roll right and air roll left enabled. And I think I've kind of got it down. You actually have to tap the air roll button. But if you just hold it down... See, no aerials, he totally whiffed. I can't get that from my position. Um, but if I hold air roll to start and then release it at the end, um, I'm in the wrong position. Likewise, if I start by just using the stick and then I move to air roll by the end, I'm also in the wrong position. Um, so I need to um, sporadically tap the air roll button. Yeah, I just help them. Teammate. Or maybe everyone's lagging or something. What server is this? I don't know, but we got two people from potentially Europe in here.
something like the Recorder of Cuxier Twist, you need to be doing a partial air roll and a um, primarily a controller twist. Because the Cuxier Twist is like, I don't know if you can picture a clock face, it's like 7 o'clock and 5 o'clock. So it's like down and slightly left, down and slightly right. Air roll left and air roll right is like 9 and 3 o'clock. So consider 7 and 5 to 9 and 3. You're not air rolling as much doing a Cuxier Twist compared to um, just a straight up air roll. Alright, barely got that without it going in. So, with a Cuxier Twist, you have to be doing a partial air roll for the entire movement, and that's where the tapping comes in. So, good practice there. Uh, now's a good time to charge. Teammate's probably going to have that. He looked like he was creeping up. I know he's cutting again, so now I've got low boost, and I'm in a bad position. Yep. It went off the wall, so he couldn't get it. No boost. Is that in? No, it's not. But of course, the reason why the Cuxier Twist exists is because players uh, wanted to discover certain movements from one position to get to another position. What's the fastest way of doing so? Um, similarly, when you're um, doing speed cubing like a Rubik's Cube, um, you want to be able to figure out the fastest way to get from one permutation to another. Uh, you kid it out. They just kill it back. So when you're doing speed cubing, um, you want to learn these algorithms so that you can get from one position to the next really quickly. So, some players like certain positions, which is why they want to get to them faster. Just like other um, speed cubers like uh, certain orientations of the cube, so they will learn... Um, oh, I took off wrong. So they will learn certain uh, algorithms to work with the way that they uh, do their speed cubing. So what I might find is that there uh, might be some things like a Cuxer twist that I simply don't want to do because I don't need to get from that position to the next. Um, I might prefer something else and therefore the Cuxer pinch might not be useful uh, for my keybind layout. Yeah, probably should have done some warm-up first. That was an easy hit, and I just blew it. Oh, whatever works. Can I pinch? No. Maybe this is a good way to start some of my theory-based stuff. Instead of just going onto YouTube and start talking about theory, 
without any content, um, might be a good idea to start and then just discuss a few different things while playing uh, actual matches. Uh, of course, I won't be giving points as uh, frequently because my mind is 100% fo focused on the content. Instead, I'm still trying to play, etc. How's my stream quality? Yep, still, still getting frames. Looks like okay, upload speed's good. So I can talk about a few things. Uh, even in a game like Rocket League, we can talk about resources. Most players think, well, you know, if you're playing StarCraft, that's a resource-based game. Or maybe if you're talking about uh, certain aspects of, like, Diablo. Well, that's a resource-based game. Um, even RPGs, like Undertale and Final Fantasy, can be resource-based games, if you consider I need to get experience as a resource, gold as a resource, uh, things like that. Every single game has resources. It's just what you define as a resource and what I define as a resource is probably very different but, once you understand my concept of resources, perhaps it'll um, allow you to alter uh, some of your definition of what a resource is. Yeah, I should get my notes together. Uh, this game is just boring now. Ten seconds in, so still 450 left. And we're already up four goals. So is this like a what is it, home run derby or something in baseball? It just pitchers throw nice easy lobs. Oh, that was off. And players just see how many home runs they can try and get. I think that's called a home run derby. So they just keep throwing kickoffs at us. And we just see how many uh, kickoff goals we can get. Ah, I can't hit that out. No, I can't hit that out. Ah. The bounce was so slightly off from what I thought it would get. I don't know how to do backflips with power. That's still something I need to work on. Off corner. For some reason I thought it was further out. I have no idea why. I'm just being bad. I'm like, yeah, I got plenty of time. I can backflip for that. Not backflip, I can reverse aerial for that. Then the wall appeared. I'm like, no, I can't. Well, nonetheless. I think maybe they just were giving us a handicap. Four goals at the start. It's like, oh, we got this. Technically, that was my teammate's ball. Um, he might have been off for boost, and I didn't notice it. Ah, uh, he got boost. I 
I didn't? No. Ooh, finally. From what I see in hoops, at least at my level of play, is people just derp around and throw the ball everywhere until somebody's in the right place at the right time for a right rebound. Oops. We're good. They can't angle from there. No, Timmy is probably going to go up for that. Yeah, he was in a much better position. I shouldn't have gone. power if you shoot it um, too far out toward the center of the court at that place from that position um, obviously the rim is much smaller in the center of the court so you've got to hit it much more accurately whereas if you can hit it so that it like basically touches the backboard at the same time that it's going in you've got maximum coverage on the backboard so when you do a corner shot like that you want to try and aim as much as possible for the backboard trying to get it to either ride the wall or bounce in such a way that it's hitting the backboard right when it's going in. That gives you the maximum amount of kind of power um, disparity, power gradient. What's what's a good term for that? Power range. Yeah, there we go. So you can have a much um, wider power range to hit it when it's going off the backboard. But if you hit it very close to the center, um, you've got a very small window of uh, power that you can hit it where it's actually going to go in because otherwise slightly too much too little it's going to hit the front and then loop back around slightly too much it's going to hit the other side and loop back around and depending on the angle um just by looping um its own power is going to turn against it and throw the ball out of the net while it's looping So those shots are a little difficult. I'll take first. Uh, he's good, so I'll just block. Alright, we're against much better players this time around. Let's hope we can keep it up. No, I hit it right to him. My fault. I might be able to get this. Okay, I just had to beat him. And yeah, other guy was already there, so my teammate couldn't get a free shot. Hit it high. They can't do much with this ball. Yes, it gives them time to recover, but it also gives my teammate time to recover. Uh, he might... too heavy? I'll have to re rebound that. Okay. He got it. Ooh. Maybe he didn't get it. I thought he had it. It's tricky because it's right on the rim. Ah. I 
can't get that. Okay, good. It didn't bounce off the corner. Get this boost. Teammates going uh, away, so that gives me opportunity. Nah, oh, way too hard. Teammates going up for that. I almost hit him accidentally. No. Oh, I'm just not getting good hits. Let's whack it away. They can't do much, and it gives my teammate time to get back. No, I missed that. Oh, this boost isn't coming back up anytime soon. Alright, I just need to go straight for net. Yeah, I wanted to go up on the backboard for that, but I didn't have the time. Good, I got their corner. Uh, no angle on that. I jumped way too early. Should have waited like a half second. Didn't realize teammate was going for their corner boost. Yep, and so a large part of this play, um, I'm still on my other account rated higher than where I am right now, but I'm starting to get close. So now I can't just say, oh, well, I'm so mechanically and theoretically superior to everybody that I can just start grabbing all the balls and making impossible shots and don't have to worry about uh, what my teammates are doing. But no, since now I'm starting to get somewhat close to my actual rating on my other account, I need to start worrying about uh, what my teammates doing. I need to start positioning myself correctly because I will be missing some shots that should otherwise have been easy shots. Uh, likewise, um, my teammates are now getting to a respectable level where I can start relying and depending on them to make certain plays, uh, whether I'm used to them or um, whether I simply see that they are capable of making the plays. Like, you won't expect somebody to be able to hit a uh, flip reset uh, double tap at this rating, but if you start relying on players around, you know, Platt to do so, they're going to... Uh, can't think of the term. Man, I'm coming up with blanks. Um, live up to your expectations. They won't be able to abide by expectations. What's the term? I think live up to your expectations, maybe. Good heavy clear. I'll let it bounce. And teammates like, nope. He gave me the mitts. We're up one, so there's no reason to uh, rush. I want to prefer to get a good hit if they're playing it slow, instead of wasting um, everything on, well, we're in bad position, we've got no boost, and now we're just going to throw it to their side of the net with possibly a bad hit, so it's even going to be going mid, and it might have a little bit of an angle on it, um, elevation on it so that we're basically passing it right to them and then we're out of position we got no boost and they get a goal no reason to um risk a play like that when we're up a goal and there's not much time remaining We went up four, five divisions? I don't know. I thought I was plat two something, now I'm plat three, div three. Yeah, we just need to get back to diamond in all modes. That's my first objective.
And of course, you never know when modes are going to be popular. Sometimes I might get like five to ten drop shots in a row. And I'm like, okay, tonight's a drop shot night, and I'll start only queuing for drop shot. Um, other times, I might want to queue for drop shot, and there's not a game in sight. Then I just have to rely on other game modes. So I'm just queuing for everything right now, trying to get fast queue times. Yep, stream is still stable. Let's hope it stays that way. Alright, let's talk about some resources. So what is a resource? A resource is simply a figure, a trackable figure that you can utilize as a form of currency or a measure or of exchange. So sometimes measurable is debatable. You have to sometimes get creative with some of the measures that you take to measure certain resources. But a very important resource in Rocket League is position. So believe it or not, you can give position, you can take position, you can trade position. So position is physically a resource. It is a trackable, measurable unit of currency or exchange. If all three of my teammates, including myself, are all up on the opponent's net and the ball is on our side of the court, you could say that we have very little positional advantage. So you can't talk about advantage and disadvantage if you couldn't quantify or measure something. So what you could say is we're out of position, which means that my position is bad and I need to start exchanging potentially boost or potentially my teammates will need to slow down the play in order to give me um, allocate some time for me to get back um, to where I need to be or to get into the right position, which indicates that they're also giving opponents time to reposition, get back to net, etc. So they are giving up their own positional advantage to benefit my positional advantage and um, to also benefit the opponents. But that exchange sometimes is worthwhile because it's a net gain for our team. It's going in. <coughs> it's a net gain for our team because, yes, um, all three opponents are getting something, whereas my teammate is only trading um, his positional advantage for mine. So in a sense, all three of them are gaining, but only one of us is kind of gaining, and the other one is kind of giving away. So it's kind of like we're gaining nothing, and they're gaining three units of position. However, what that allows us to do is it allows us to trade other things. We're not just getting better position, we're also getting boost. We're also trying to track timers. And so there's other aspects, not just position, um, of the game that we're trying to make better. And what that is, is different resources. Resource, a boost could be resource. Time is technically a resource. If you're up goals, um, you don't want to start blowing... Uh, crap, that was my fault. If you're up uh, goals, then you can actually start uh, running out the clock. And your opponents, in a struggle for their t resource that they desperately need of time, uh, will start to make bad plays because they need to uh, get on the scoreboard. They need to tie it up by the time uh, overtime hits. So what you'll notice is some players have an innate um, knowledge and understanding intuitively about the resource called time. What they do is when there's like five seconds on the clock and they're down a goal, you'll see all three of them go up and you'll see them triple commit. You'll also see all three of them ignore their own goal and go for a very, very, very offensive play on the opponent's net, leaving their own net wide open. And the reason why is because they know in five seconds the game's over if we don't score a goal. So they're willing to give up their own positional advantage in order to um, play to the other resource of time. So, when you talk about resources in this kind of way, it actually, in my opinion, makes a lot of uh, sense to the point where it's, it's quite fun. Because you start to talk about, well, what are you willing to give up versus what are you willing to... Um, uh, okay, good. I didn't know which way he was hitting that, so I'm just glad he missed. 
what, what resources are you willing to give up or trade compared to which resources um, will you not compromise on and you will hold out to the end? Uh, too far left. Darn it, that was... That should have been in. Wait, that is in. Good job. So resources when... Yeah, I said that already. Um, so you're starting to trade position for boost. Trade position for time. And again, if a boost is about to come up, um, you might see somebody stalling in order to get the boost, and then once they have the boost, um, then they'll make their play. Is that going in? Yeah. So for example, if I know that corner boost is coming up in two seconds, I'll try and control it instead of throwing it away. Um, because if I can just wait two seconds, I'll have enough boost where now I can start making an offensive play out of this. Instead of, I just throw the ball away toward the opponents, and now suddenly I'm out of the play again. Oh, that was nutty, but it still missed. That's what I mean about the rim. Um, technically it was in, but the outside of the rim... Oh, lucky. The outside of the rim act like a loop, and the ball's own uh, tangential speed worked against the torus. I should stop talking mathematics now. Um... Not too far down. Good. He popped it up, so went right into my car. In. Yeah, it bounced though. Opponent couldn't read that bounce, so it was good. Yeah, Swift knows this, and he's already turning his wheels. Oh, they forfeit. GG. <clears throat> so position is an important resource. Time is a resource. You can actually um, force the opponents to give up their position in exchange for time. So if you're up, um, you're up two goals, and there's a minute on the clock, you can play it very safe, you can play it very slow back at your own net. And what you can do is you can make the opponents come to you. And that's very good in some situations because it allows you to outplay them. You can get it around them and then you've got much more of the field to worry about getting passing plays when it's potentially a 1v2 because the opponent just flew by you, you and your teammate can push up. Or, you know, 3v2 or something. So if you're up time and goals, um, and we can almost consider them as resources, but I'll ignore goals for now. And just say, if you've got the uh, advantage in the game, you can give up some of um, the time on the clock for positional advantage. So there's no reason to just keep throwing balls away. And then sometimes uh, momentum and flow uh, can also be a type of uh, resource. And sometimes what I'll do is I notice sometimes players are playing very, very fast, very, very quickly. And uh, sometimes they're even in a pre-made. And I'm noticing that they're making a lot of like passing plays and they're trying for a lot of crazy stuff on net. And what I'll do is I will physically start slowing the plays down. Is Instead of just banging it away and then letting their like rotations and momentum carry them. Um, I'll slow the play down to the point where they're going to have to run up and 50-50 me, which means that they are now uh, playing my game instead of me playing theirs. And so I'll actually change the pace and the flow of the game. Um, and I can use that as a resource. Um, when it comes to mind games especially, um, not just chess, but well, I mean, not just most games, but even chess has the concept of mind games. You can do things um, that you you know may be actually bad in some scenarios, but if it fakes your opponent out, um, you can use that to your advantage. So, switch the momentum around. Even though you might be down, you can change the momentum. You can force them to start playing slower games. They might not be used to slower games. Uh, it's going in and I don't have enough boost to get back around fast enough. 
And instead of us playing them, their game, um, we force them to play our game. And now the advantage switches. That's in. Good job. Ah, uh, crap. I thought that would barely tip the rim and go kind of high. That was my fault. Oh, uh, no, that was clearly over. Total misread. Nice save. Teammates are starting to get good. But the opponents are also getting good. And notice the moment he touched it, the opponent was already up in the air for it. It's not like what I'm used to. <clears throat> Alright. Gonna have to turn it up now. Start playing correctly instead of just running around the field. Oh gosh. And I missed my kickoff. Okay, good. Okay, got a good hit over the other side of the court. What's that called? A clear? I guess it's a clear. Good, I got a bump. Didn't work though. Slow down the play, and now suddenly they're all out of position. I feel like I'm getting bumps, but it doesn't seem to be affecting them. He knows I'm slowing down the play now, so now I gotta switch it up. So, mind games. So he's going to expect me to go slow, and then I can hit it right past him next time. Yeah, see, he could bump me there, because he knew I was just going to wait for it. Oh, it's going in. Ah. Well, still possible. I mean, you saw we were up four goals in the first ten seconds, so we can turn this around by 44. Now, of course, it's better players, so the likelihood that they're going to whiff all their kickoffs is much lower, but nonetheless, uh, kickoff goals are, uh, in hoops, the most common mode for kickoff goals to occur. So you don't see nearly as many kickoff goals in snow day, um, in standard, in drop shot, etc. Uh, hoops, kickoff goals are possible. Um, much more readily. I don't know, I'm trying to salvage that sentence much more possible. How do I salvage that? I don't. I just drop it. Alright, so in hoops, um, kickoff goals are the most common... No. Kickoff goals are the most common in hoops. There we go. English. This language. Alright, got a loss. But I think I was like diamond one in hoops before. That doesn't count as a save. <clears throat> and that's because you somewhat mess your kickoff. Um, other modes, it's easy to just get in the way of the ball. Wow, it was diamond two. Yeah, that's right about where I am, so... Guess we can stop playing hoops now. Uh, let's just go to competitive.
Yeah, so mind games, um, you can actually use information as a resource. So you can play a certain way, players start getting used to your play style, and then you switch it up, and suddenly they're expecting you to do one thing and you do something different. So that information was a resource that you used. Um, I don't know if deception would be the right word, but you're, um, you're getting them to think one way and doing something else. So mind games, very, very important. Later on, uh, I got too much height on that. I wanted to lob it so that it drops right in front of the goal, and one of our teammates is not really playing very well. Maybe he got ranked up, maybe he's just a list of placements and got lucky. Whatever the case is, um, doesn't know much about position, and then uh, mechanically also not the best. So it's kind of a 2v3, so we'll see if we can do this. I'm going to wait because technically my teammate should be up on the backboard for that. Okay, he was able to get that. And they're still the kind of players where they want to hit the ball if they're close by it. So they're not going to wait patiently for their teammates um, to get in the right position. And then they're going to give it to their teammates. So that starts becoming more important higher up. But what you notice there is they hit the ball, they try to cycle back around instead of going back to net. If they went back to net, I would have had a great clear. And if they stood their ground, now I'm forced out of position while the opponents are all gaining better position. And then, of course, they're not gaining boost, they're not rotating, so they're not gaining momentum. Um, velocity is another important uh, resource. Sometimes you can make plays if you're high velocity, like a defensive play. Um, that you couldn't make if you were standing still, and then you started to have a boost from scratch. Sometimes you're at zero boost and you need to be going supersonic, so if you don't have any boost, that means um, velocity may very well be a resource working against you, that you need to uh, work out better. So you need to trade some other things to get velocity. So ex for example, you need to trade some time. You need to do a wave dash, you need to go over for side boost. So you trade time for velocity. And of course that can come in different things as well. Sometimes you may want um, the boost to gain velocity later on. Whereas you don't need the velocity right now. So you might trade time for boost. Another way to use resources. Exchanging them. Yeah, at this point maybe I'm getting a little too theoretical. Um, but I'm talking about all games in general, so, you know, I can very easily talk about League of Legends, you can trade time. Whoa, okay, got it. Um, uh, I'm, the best I can do coming at it T-boning like that is just getting a pinch off the wall. Um, there's no need. Uh, uh, for some reason I thought I could control that. Ignore me. Um, yeah, my decisions are not the best right now. But nonetheless, um, I can talk about another game and start talking about, well, you want to trade time for gold. Um, so you might want to uh, ignore part of the map so that you can go kill a bunch of monsters and obtain gold. But because you're not doing anything on the important parts of the map, you're going to unimportant parts to obtain the gold. Um, you're trading your time that you're not doing other stuff on the map for gold that you can kill those enemies um, and once we start understanding resource exchanges and stuff we can start talking about opportunity cost and that's when it really gets fun I'm um, talking about optimally playing a game he's going in no no oh, he touched it we're up one, so no need to make those kinds of plays. Again, since we have the advantage, um, technically being up, I guess you can call it a time advantage, because um, if both players kind of, or both teams kind of stop playing in a sense, we win by default, which means that the onus is on them to make the plays. So if they don't make the plays, they lose. So because of that, uh, we can 
force them to get out of position. When we use our time advantage. Oh, didn't. Didn't read that right. That's in. <coughs> oh, well, <laughs> at least it made both of them think for boost. And the third one, yeah, um, in that situation, you never want to go straight for the ball. You want to go straight for net so you can defend against it. Because our teammate was also in position uh, to get a follow-up. Um, just in case the one in front did get demoed. So teammate should have that. He had better positioning and a better angle than I did. Oh, it's going in. Wow, close. I thought it was. I couldn't get that out enough. I had to get it to the wall. Am I people to get a demo? Nope. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, so he was all the way back in net, and then he couldn't even defend the net, so that means um, that you were si uh, significantly out of position. Not just a minor positional mistake, but um, a heavy positional mistake. If you're all the way so far from the action that when the ball finally does get to you, you still can't do anything with it, you're essentially um, almost non-existent. You're not on offense, you're not on defense, you're not anywhere. And then, of course, you're in the middle of the map, so there's no uh, large boost pads to get. Uh, full boost thing. I don't know what to call them. Full boost boosts? Full boost pickups. So, he wasn't getting full boost pickups, he wasn't on offense, wasn't on defense, and um, information. He was also at an information disadvantage. He made me think that he was able to defend the net. So I was playing in such a way where I left him in charge of the net, and I was not in a position to defend the net effectively. So even informationally, um, he was giving off the wrong bit to his team. So yeah, just everything about that. I mean, the only thing I could think of was he might have had to do something for five or ten seconds in real life, so he had to put the controller down, or, you know, maybe he was uh, grabbing a quick drink or a bite or something to eat. That's the only thing I can think of. I can get this first. Didn't realize he had the recovery and he was going for it. Okay, good. The problem is we triple commit there. Oh, I shouldn't have jumped. Well, then again, did the jump really do much? Yeah, it was because of the triple commit. None of us are back in net. It was kind of my fault, but I also had zero boost, so I was not playing well. Oh, not enough over. Maybe he can get the rebound? Nope. Opponent had a good control. Yeah, it's not an angle. Nobody's going to be able to shoot from there. What I'm doing there is I'm just making my presence known so that both of the enemies would be um, hard-pressed to engage. If they tried to, I'd bump them. So I'm forcing them away. So this way, both of my teammates can get a better position um, while I'm forcing two opponents to waste their position. So I was exchanging two opponents' positions for two of my teammates' positions. Um, very solid to do, considering I had low boost, and um, I was also already out of position myself, so I couldn't make any plays from that position. So I was doing a lot of positive trading there, which is why I decided to just stick around and kind of do nothing in front of the ball. And you notice it worked. Um, teammates slammed it across, and uh, right across both opponents. So once your advantage uh, swings significantly enough, you can start um, forcing those minor intangible advantages into tangible advantages. Now suddenly we've got an offensive attack coming instead of just... Ooh, did I get it round two? No. Uh, oh my goodness. Teammate missed the read, and the opponent hit the read. All right, we're starting to get to that rating. What is this? this is solo standard. 
so maybe plat 2, plat 3. Essentially add a whole tier or so. So plat 3 in solo standard is like diamond 3 in regular standard. Off the ceiling, but I got over him, so I was able to get a rebound. My teammate's leaving. Not good. Hit it over him, and my teammate missed the read. So opponents can read, my teammates can't. That's a piece of a, a vital piece of information that I'll need to be able to make plays later. So if my teammates can't read, that means I won't be able to um, do passes off the backboard, for example. Um, I'll need to make shots, or I'll need to make infield passes. So it'll change the way I play, because I now have that information. Oh, it's good. Close. There's no opponents. Just push it in. Nah, no, but he couldn't. He was pushing it outside. Yeah, suddenly I'm not so sure about this game. boost to the wall, get out fast. Teammates can't read, so I'd have to make the offensive pressure on that play. And I totally misread that, but it was okay. My other teammate went back to net, um, and then the teammate in mid was able to get mid boost. Now, there was still a defender, so I couldn't make a shot on net. So I just wanted to hit it in such a way where I'm still creating pressure. Oh, and I mistimed his uh, challenge. And now I'm the only defender here. Do a late flick so it comes kind of uh, popped up instead of just straight back. Because the opponent uh, would have to make a boost play. And he wouldn't have as much time. In other words, it gives me more time for my teammates to get into position. And more time uh, for them to be able to make a play off of a rebound. Instead of trying to predict a shot when they can't read it. Um, nobody's doing anything with that, so just let it fall. And teammates out of position, so I'll be grabbing this one. I can probably control it, but I just saw the opponent at the last second. Alright, teammates should be going for this. Okay, good. And hopefully... Okay. He was able to get that read. So 25 seconds for a goal. I think we can... There's a possibility we can come back. Nobody's calling it. Backflip hit. Teammate. Alright, good. Got it over two of them. trying to go a little bit faster because time is um, a resource that we no longer have. Yeah, I know they're kind of going up for that, so... Unfortunately, I'm going to have to make a dribble play, but everybody and their mom at this level uh, wants to hit it up into the air and misrotate, so they're just going to fling it off. Yeah, nothing I can do. GG. Eek. Back down to plat one. Alright, I think this will be my last game. Then we'll end the stream. It's new new. There's nobody in sight, so I can take my time, make a dribble play, and he was able to get that. <coughs> get a demo at least one. It's open for two. Alright, got his demo. That demo is unfortunately somewhat risky, 
because I could potentially demo him and then immediately slam my car into the ball. And at that angle, the ball's going up. Teammate probably going to have that, so I don't want to double commit. Nice. So right after I demo, I can't control my car for, you know, split second, and then I accidentally hit the ball. I'll hit the ball from underneath the ball, so it'll angle up, and I'll have a lot of power, because I'm obviously demoing, so I'm already going supersonic. So power and angle, which means basically I'm getting a really nice own goal shot that my teammates can't defend. So that kind of demo is quite risky. Uh, I miss hit that, so let me just go up fast, get a block. Hit this back. No opponents, so we're safe. I got only three touches. Okay, people are starting to do aerials. What is this? Competitive solo. This is plat one. Um. Ah, oh, darn. Ah, uh, I didn't think that people could do that. Normally, players play pretty similarly, but when my opponents and my teammates play very differently, it's sometimes we play right into their strengths. Yeah, if three people are going up, there's no reason for me to also go up. I might as well be able to make a follow-up play like that. Is that high enough? Uh, he saved it. Okay, other teammates very far on the left side, so I've got time to creep up. I'm going to give this to the teammate. Just pull back. Okay, he's going for large boost. So I'll go and make the play, and now he's cutting in, so I might be able to get this read, but I double commit. Teammate needs to go for that. He's a little bit too far back, but he's probably also nervous about a pinch. I was afraid of hitting my teammate. Just a light touch. They're not going to be able to get much power off of that shot. And it gives teammate time to come in. Yeah, I'll need to go straight back here. That was good that my other teammate was able to contest it. Make the wall get thrown away. And I got no boost for a save. Good, good backboard defense. Atticus should be going left for a pass. Little touch off the back. Maybe I can get a neat little... That was a perfect, beautiful pass, but he wasn't in position. Wait, what? My game froze. My game died. Well, that's a first. I'm still there. I'm still there. Oh, it's 1-1, one, one, so I need to get back in fast. Come on. Where's rejoin? Where's rejoin? Where's rejoin? And it booted me. Uh, maybe they left. Oh, that's stupid. Alright, well I guess I have to end the stream there. Darn, we could have won that easy. It's 1-1, one, one, and the opponents were making a lot of positional mistakes, so our teammates were capitalizing on it. Unfortunate. Alright, well, good games. Um, look forward to the next stream, and I'm hoping to produce more YouTube content during primetime hours when internet speeds seem a little slow. So I'll see if I can get the tech support to fix that. Uh, otherwise, see you next time. Enjoy. Have fun.